opening song is going to be It Is Well With My Soul. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Today, this church service is going to be led out by the 7th and 8th graders at College View Academy. And we're happy to be here. It's a beautiful day out, and please enjoy. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we've come to worship you today. Thank you that you made the sky clear and beautiful, and hopefully we can get some fresh air today. Um, help the speakers to know what to say and to bless their words. In the name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Hello? The verse I'm going to be reading is 2 Corinthians 8, 3, and 4. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. The Christians in Macedonian heard about the difficulties Christians in Jerusalem were having. They opened up their hearts and their purses to help their brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. They urgently pleaded with Paul to accept their offerings in, in order to help their others in Jerusalem. When was the last time you pleaded with somebody to accept your offerings or take your gift to somebody else? To help that person or cause. There are many brothers and sisters who need our help today. Mac the Mac Macedonian churches were in s severe trial and extreme poverty, and yet they were welled up in empathy and rich generosity. What was, willing, what was welling up in 
in your heart today? What person or cause are you willing to support? Will the deacons please rise? And will you please bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, thank you for the example of the Macedonians in the Bible. The willingly open or our hearts so you can touch us and that we may also excel in this grace of giving. Amen. little ones it's time for the lamb offering right now and if you want to head back to the back get your basket and start listening for the little clanking of chain and look for the waving of dollar bills and then come up back to the front for a children's story and we're going to have a special children's story given by the young men right here approaching the front good morning boys and girls today we are going to um show you a small skit, and um, it's gonna be good. Please enjoy. Okay, so for the first part of our skit, Eli's going to be at first for hide and seek. Okay guys, we're gonna play hide and seek. Okay, I'm gonna count you guys hide. Okay, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I found you. Oh man. Hey. Found you. Oh man. Found you. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was caught first, so the second round, I'll guess I'll be it. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Where'd he go? Where is he? Oh, there you are. Oh, man. <laughs> Where is he? Oh. There, found you. Found me. 
Where is he? Oh. <laughs> Found you. All right, guys, I'll be it. Go hide. One, two, three, four, five. Here I come. Where are they? Oh, <laughs> got you. Got you. Where are they? <laughs> got you. Right here? Oh, there you are. All right. This reminds me of a story that my grandpa told me a couple days ago. There was a man named Jonah, and he was running away from God. But God knew who he was because God loves you, and he'll always know where you are. So even if you're in troubles or you feel sad, just pray to God because he can help you, and he knows where you are. All right. As they're heading back to your seats, I just want to say happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. And uh, welcome to Piedmont, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us here today. And we just want to have a special thank you to uh, Mr. Adams and the 7th and 8th grade class for being participants in the service today and leading us into worship. Thank you so much. It has not been a disappointment. And so thank you so much. We have a couple of announcements right now, and you're up. I just want to brag on my students a little bit. Um, these are not ordinary kids. They, ordinary kids say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be up front. But these kids wanted to. And uh, they planned the music. They wrote the sermons. They are the ones that prepared. And yes, I did some organization and, and all of that. But these kids really did it all. And I'm just really super proud of them. And uh, glad for the families that are supporting them as well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe we have one from... From who? Virgil? All right, we'll do Virgil first. In your bulletins, uh, you'll find a advertisement for samples of the world. And uh, here it is on the screen. I don't know about you, but I love baklava. They, uh, there's nothing better uh, when it comes to desserts. And you can go to uh, College View Church on Sunday, October 30th, and participate in Samples of the World. It's a wonderful opportunity to try some things maybe that you've never tried before, uh, particularly from the Middle East, but uh, from elsewhere, and support the Good Neighbor Community Center in the process because this is a fundraiser I forget what year this is, uh, six maybe, uh, year, and I have a lot of fun there. I love to eat, I think most of you do, so I'd urge you to come and participate. This afternoon, uh, we have uh, end time study group at four o'clock uh, here in the new multipurpose room, so I encourage you to attend. Now one from Renee. Well, um, we will bring you a report a little later on about the fundraiser that we just got done doing to raise turkeys for the uh, Good Neighbor Center. And so we'll expect that a little later on. Today, I'd like you just to talk to you about saving the date for something that's quite interesting and fun. And that is the uh, Center for People in Needs Giving Thanksgiving distribution event. And um, I think we've done it for four years. I believe one time we took like 45 people down there from y'all volunteering. And you couldn't look at any table and not see a Piedmont Park member helping out with the smiles. It was really wonderful. So just save the date, November 19, and we'll be there from 1 to 4. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have one, I think it's a special announcement from uh, Vern Thompson and Rich. Boy, hey Vern, this has been a tough war here. This kind of thing. Then I got number 75. Yeah, I tell you. On November 4th, 
in three of the theaters in town. There will be a showing of Hacksaw Ridge. It's the story of Desmond Doss. And folks, I'm not gonna encourage you to go to theaters, but I am gonna encourage you to help us because after those films release, we're gonna have five tables outside the theaters. And on those tables, we're gonna have books like this one. That's right. And this book here, it tells the story of, of Desmond Doss and what happened to him in that, in that war. Uh, he was the first conscious objector to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor <clears throat> for his bravery and to the Lord who preserved his life, preserved at least 75 men <clears throat> during the Battle of Okinawa. So, uh, and in the back of the book, it talks about Seventh-day Adventists, what we believe. And uh, so, this is gonna be very helpful. When this film was, <clears throat> was previewed, <coughs> At the Venice uh, Film Festival, the people stood for 10 minutes and applauded the film. And uh, so this is going to be a real outreach for our church and uh, to the Lord. What's really amazing is we only need enough people to man five tables. And all you have to do is this simple. When the people come out of the theater, they got to walk one way or the other. And when they come by the table, you simply say, you saw the film, now read the book, it's free. Tough deal, isn't it? Right. <laughs> it's free? Yeah, it's free. It's free. Now, what are we, how are we gonna get help? Yes, we've got sign-up sheets there at the welcome desk. If, so if you could just sign your name, your phone number, what day, and if you're uh, in the afternoon or evening, that you could uh, help us. And so, Right now, we don't have the, the exact times of the film. Uh, we will find that out later, hopefully this week, I don't know, from the theater. But just sign up for day or evening. It's on Friday the 4th, and the movies start at 10 in the morning, so we're gonna need some people at 10. I think another one is at uh, 1, and again at 4, and then again at 7, and. Maybe one at 10, I don't know. Yeah. We'll so you late night people, sure. you sign up for the evening. <laughs> but it's gonna be as simple as this. Being friendly and kind and simply saying, you saw the film, now read the book, it's free. Yeah. And I'll, well, I, you can't bet, can you? I'll wager <laughs> <laughs> that our 500 books will be gone by Friday night. Yeah, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, we also have an event coming up on uh, the 31st. It's going to be our annual Light Up the Dark. And if you're interested in volunteering, uh, there's contact information in the bulletin to contact Jeanette Halfhill. I believe last year we served the community of about 800 people coming through. It's a healthy alternative. If you guys don't know what Light Up the Dark is, it's an alternative to for kids to go out, um, instead of going door to door, trick or treating, asking for candy, they are able to come here and each room, Sabbath school room, is going to be themed a different Bible story theme. And they'll go into each room and they'll be able to learn a little bit about the Bible, receive some candy, and they'll learn about Jesus on that night. And there will be food, games, music, bounce houses, so, and I believe we're passing now um, little flyers for it. Let people know. Invite people, as many as you can, and have them come be a part of this. Like I said, if you're interested in helping and volunteering, um, let um, Jeanette Halfhill know, and the contact information is in the bulletin. And One of the great privileges that I have um, as far as teaching over at Union College is we get great students who come along, and they like to talk. And so several years ago, Pastor Caleb was when in my classroom, and when he was there, I could tell him, Caleb, shh, it's enough. You've said too much. Now, of course, right now, you may be wondering, what am I doing standing up here? But if you don't know, the month of October is a special month for churches around the United States, and it's been designated Pastor's Appreciation Month. So I apologize for interrupting you once again, Pastor Caleb, but if you wouldn't mind just setting your mic down and standing up here and invite your senior pastor to join you, well, we would like to 
extend our appreciation as the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church to both of these fine gentlemen who work very hard. Now, I must tell you that just yesterday in class, I was talking with the students about the challenges of pastoring and the things that come up. And I told them because somebody had said they'd come up with an excuse why they weren't ready for something in class. And I said, I just want to tell you, when you go out pastoring, you will have a test every week. And it doesn't matter what has happened during your week. It doesn't matter if the dog ate your homework. It doesn't matter if somebody needed your help that week. When you were planning to write your sermon at 11 o'clock on Sabbath morning, you better be ready. The church will be listening. And there are great challenges for those of you who have not pastored, and I know that's most of you. There's great challenges to being a pastor, and we really appreciate the dedication I was talking with the students about how every conversation you have, people are listening to. And they looked at me, and they, they didn't know what to They said, every conversation? Really? Right? When you take on the mantle of pastoring, you take on a very serious calling, one with great responsibility. And we appreciate these two men. And so we have several gifts. And somewhere around here, if I have maybe failed to bring them up. Somebody have the cards? Do you have the cards? Oh, you handed them out already? All right, excellent. Behind my back, I didn't see. So there are cards there that have been signed by our members here, and there are also a couple of gift certificates on the back of your cards. So I hope you will enjoy those. And we also have some artwork. I apologize. It's for your office, not your home office. So, But I do hope that you will enjoy uh, these pictures, maybe as you're in your office and thinking and praying and writing sermons, you'll reflect on these pictures of Jesus. This one is for Pastor Caleb, and this one is for Pastor Michael. So, Pastor Michael, Pastor Caleb, thank you very much for what you do on behalf of our church. Uh, may God continue to richly bless your ministry. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, and I just have one more final announcement. Uh, tomorrow here at 2 p.m., for those of you who did not know, um, there will be a funeral being held here uh, for Jeannie McNew, as she has sadly passed, uh, I believe, earlier this week with her struggle with cancer. So if you could just keep uh, her husband and the family in prayers, that would be greatly appreciated tomorrow here at 2 p.m. And now I just ask that you uh, continue to be blessed as we are being led in worship by our young people. Please stand and join us in singing song number 213, Jesus is Coming Again.
The next song is number 214, one page over, We Have This Hope. For our prayer song this morning, we're going to sing as the deer, and uh, when we get to the end of the song, would everybody please kneel for prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a beautiful day out today. Thank you that we can come and worship you on this beautiful Sabbath morning. And no matter what's happening with all around us, we still have you. Um, help anybody that couldn't come today. Help all the sick people. Help anybody who has aching bones or aching hearts or minds. Please be with um, anybody who needs prayer right now. Thank you that we could come out and help the pastors to um, know what to say and please be with them. Thank you that it's a beautiful day out and let me pray, amen. The text that I'm reading is from 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Thank you. 
you for letting us be here to worship your name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Imagine that you have been waiting for something really important. Like when you ask your mom to bring you Starbucks when she picks you up. And when she comes to pick you up, <laughs> Hello? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Imagine that you have been waiting for something really, really important. Like when you ask your mom to bring you Starbucks when she picks you up, you open the car door so excited, and there's no Starbucks. That's a disappointment. This also happened with Ellen Harmon and over 100,000 people. Though they were not waiting for Starbucks, they were waiting for something more important, Jesus' return. Ellen, who later married James White and co-found the Seventh-day Adventist Church, had a part in what happened that sad night. 100,000 people in northeastern United States waited for Jesus' second coming in October 22, 1844. Sadness set in at midnight when they realized that their hopes would not be fulfilled. Many cried until morning. I can't even imagine how profound and life-changing an event it must have been, not just for Ellen White, but for all the Advent believers who were heavily invested in the anticipation of Jesus' return, White's great-grandson Charles said in a telephone interview. It wasn't just because they were anticipating him, but they loved him dearly, he said. They had such a love for Jesus and a desire to be with him personally, it was a huge emotional letdown. But the Adventist descendants of those who waited for Jesus 172 years ago today do not remember the day with sadness. Instead, they, sa they say that the great disappointment was just a moment in Earth's history that saw the fulfillment of the three angels' messages in Revelations 14, 6 to 11. Many abandoned the Advent movement when the world didn't end as predicted by William Miller, who was a Baptist farmer and whose study of Daniel 8 led him to believe that Jesus' return was really, really soon. But those who clung to their faith and searched the Bible came to the understanding that Daniel's cleansing of the sanctuary was not a prophecy of Jesus' return, as Miller had believed, but the start of Jesus' final work of atonement in 18. 44. Jesus entered the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary to begin judging those who would be saved. Early Advent believers said the second angel's message was fulfilled when thousands of people left their churches in 1844 to join the Advent movement. The third angel's message was understood later as a call for people to observe the Seventh-day Sabbath and to form the foundation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The spirits of the early Advent believers got a boost about two months after the Great Disappointment, when Ellen Harmon, then 17, had her first vision. In the vision, she saw Jesus leading a group of people along a difficult path to New Jerusalem, and Jesus' second coming. Early believers understood that the vision meant heaven would be accomplished by those who remained faithful despite their current despair. Kind of like Job, when he lost everything, yet he still praised God. The great disappointment story says important things to us. The blessed hope of Jesus' return is still our hope, our aim, and should still be our expectation. Though we do not know the day and hour of Jesus' second coming, he did give us signs of the times to know when he was near. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch, branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors, Matthew 24, 32 to 33. How many of you believe that Jesus is coming again? Amen. I do too. And I know that this time, it won't be a great disappointment. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? <laughs> Joy, fear, or apathy? Have you ever been afraid? I mean, so afraid that you just want to run and hide? I know I have. Imagine you're running through a forest. The police force is chasing you. They have guns, tracking dogs, and are ready to kill you on sight. You are terrified. You don't know what to do. They catch you in a dead end. What do you do? How would you spend this small amount of time? What if I told you in a more modern sense this could happen to you? What would you say, do, or think? You would probably think, no, this is, a, this is like completely drama. It couldn't happen th today. Or, you know what, I really don't care. 
Many Adventists believe that what I just described is considered to be the end times, with a lot of drama. Now, who here would be afraid of that? Come on, show your hands. Who here would be afraid of that? Yeah, many of us. Now, who here would just ignore it? Like, just say, it's just part of everyday life. Really, nobody? Okay. <laughs> Which is the correct way to, re to react? Should we, ha should we be scared or have apathy and ignore it? To, un to answer this question, we need to understand more about the end times. To do that, we need to look into the Bible. Now, could everybody please get out your Bibles? I know if you have them um, physically, please open them up. But if you have them electronically, please just click them on. We're going to be um, going through quite a, quite a bit of verses today. The first verse is Daniel 8, 19. And again, the verse is Daniel 8, 19. And it reads, he said, I am going to tell you what will happen in the later time of wrath, because the vision concerns the appointed time of the end. Now this verse is just the, is, um, the opening verse for um, Daniel's vision about the two goats. We're not gonna be talking about that, but in this verse it says, in a time of wrath. So this, so this um, end times must, must happen in a time of wrath. Now the definition of wrath is a strong, stern, or fierce anger. So in, like I, so in this time period, there could be great troubles, or there could be um, tension between countries, or there just might be a lot of anger in the minds of the citizens. The next verse is Daniel 11.35. Again, the verse is Daniel 11.35. 11, and it reads, Some of the wise will fall so that they might be refined, purified, and spotless until the end. For it will still come to the anointed time of the end. So this verse says that during this time period, many people will fall, but through their troubles, through their struggles, they will find God and he will bring them up. Amen. The next verse is in Daniel 8, 23 through 24. And again, the verse is Daniel 8, 23 through 24. And it reads, in the later part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce looking king, a master of intrigue will arise. He will, he will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause astounding deviation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, the holy people, now this, is what, now, this is what I was referring to in the beginning about that uh, drama story. <laughs> um, this, it's pretty, and, and during this time period, um, the holy people will, tr will be brought down. They will be, try to be destroyed. And so that's the, what many people think the end times really is. So, again, so let's, let's go what, what we found in this Bible. We know that the end times will be a time of wrath, time of great struggle, tr tr oh, sorry, struggles. And um, during this time period, um, the holy people or God's people will try to be destroyed or persecuted. Now, do we have any hope in this? Is there some way in this, in this Bible that can comfort us? Well, yes, we do. There are many verses in the Bible that can help us, such as Romans 8, 38 and 39. And I'm gonna be reading these really fast, so please don't follow me along, just listen. And it reads, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor, ne nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Joshua 1.9 have, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Um, 2 Timothy 2.22 Flee the evil desires of the youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of, uh, out of a pure heart. 1 Peter 5, 9. Resist him, stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of, 
All the believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of struggles as you. Psalms, 50, Psalms 86, 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love. You call, who call to you? And they are so many, and there are so many other verses that can help us through this time period. But there is even more hope. Uh, in Daniel 8, 23, it says, he will cause deceit and prosper. He will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will not be destroyed by human powers. So this is referring to um, this great master who's going to persecute God's people. The last, what's really powerful about this verse is the last part. Yet he will not be destroyed by human powers. This verse says, us, this verse tells us that even though this man of evil, he won't, we can't stop him, but the almighty God can. Amen. God is going to destroy, God is going to help us through this time period. He is there to save us. So we shouldn't be, so we shouldn't, so back to the question in the beginning. We shouldn't feel scared or we shouldn't ignore it. Because if, if we ignore it, then we might miss a, 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 a continually thrilling um, adventure with God. And we can't feel scared either because we might lose, we might be so scared that we forget God is with us. We need to, ha we need to feel comfort through his words. Do you believe God's Jesus is coming soon? Yes. I know I am. I hope you guys. I hope you guys say what I. I hope you guys take what I've said to heart, and I hope you guys have a happy Sabbath. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can be here today on Sabbath. Um, help this sermon to not come from me, but for it to be your words, not mine. Help it to help the people in here and help them to be ready for the second coming. In your name, amen. amen. Let's read Revelation 6.16. It says, and they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Personally, I don't want to command rocks to fall on me. But God says that the wicked people will not be, feel worthy of seeing his glory when he comes back. So they will just want to die right there at the moment. But now let's turn on pages to 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. It says, We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's amazing. I mean, I want to rise from the dead, and I want to be changed into a perfect being and go, to, go live in heaven where everything's made of gold. But it's not just that what's important. What's important at this is that we're going to live with God and learn more about him, and we're just going to be with him. And all our family who believed in him will be with us there too. Amen. Now, Ellen G. White says, with anthems of celestial melody, the holy angels, a vast unnumbered throng, attend him on his way. The firmament seems filled with radiant forms, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. No human can, pen, pen can portray the scene. No mortal mind is adequate to conceive its splendor. As the living cloud comes still near, every eye beholds the prince of life. No crown of thorns now mars that sacred head but a diadem of glory rests on his holy brow. His countenance outshines the dazzling brightness of the noonday sun. Ellen G. White says we can't even start to imagine what it's like when Jesus will come back. He's gonna come back in great glory and he's gonna come back not just to show us his glory but to save us and take us with him to heaven. Now, I want you to close your eyes and think of a perfect day. 
Now, multiply that times the biggest number you can think of. When Jesus comes back, it's going to be even more glorious than that, more glorious than what your mind can imagine. Amen. Revelation 22, 1 through 5 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were, were for the he healing of nations. Verse 3 says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. They shall, there shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light for the sun, of the sun. For the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven and live with Jesus forever. Um, on December 7, 1988, an earthquake destroyed northwestern Armenia, killing about 25,000 people. In that earthquake, a school was completely destroyed. Parents were devastated, crying to their children by the rocks. But there was one father, he was different. Instead of that, he, he went through the crowd and he started digging through the rocks. And the parents looked at him and they asked him, why are you doing this? Why are you digging to find your son? Your son's dead. And all his father could say was, I promised my son that I'd be there for him no matter what. So he dug alone for eight hours, for 12 hours, for 24 hours, and then for 36 hours. A day and a half, and on the 38th hour, he heard a faint voice calling, Dad, it's me, Armand. After digging a little more where he had heard the voice, he found his son and 13 other kids. It was an amazing reunion. Armand's father had saved 14 kids. Parents, re a bunch of parents rejoiced, and they asked, why did you do this? Why did you dig for your son when it was most likely that he was dead? And all this father could answer was that, I promised my son that I would always be there for him, no matter what. Amen. Today, your father is looking for you. He's not giving up, no matter what you've done. He's waiting for you to call him and say, Dad, it's your son, or Dad, it's your daughter. Come save me. Amen. He's coming back soon in great glory. He, his glory is beyond what our brains can understand. All we can do while we're on this earth is study the Bible and believe that he is coming soon. I hope that today you choose to believe that he is coming in great, great glory. Matthew 24, 44 says, So you must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour, when you do not expect him. This says that we must be ready no matter what time it is or what has come our way. No matter what problems come, we must be ready for when Jesus comes. I hope you choose to believe that he's coming soon and he'll take all of those who believed to heaven and we will live and eat with him forever. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that we could be here. Thank you that the seventh and eighth graders were able to lead this program and that it all went well. Please help us to go home with our hearts filled with your power and glory. In your name, amen. amen. Thank you and bless you all. Would you join us in standing for our closing song, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder? I hope you'll be there with the rest of us. Number 216.
let us have closing prayer. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us this great opportunity to show your love and your passion, or our passion. Um, please bless every each and one of us as we go throughout our day, and please help us to have a blessed Sabbath. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.